Hey, what up? This is Eddie04, and today we're going to learn how to set up our GameCube controller on PC. Now, I got a little nostalgic, and I wanted to play one of my old GameCube games, you know, like Tales Symphonia or Super Smash Bros. Melee, and I had my Nintendo GameCube line there. So I decided to go ahead and use this controller to set it up on my computer. Now, I just want to point out something real quick. This method will require an additional accessory since there is no native connector from GameCube to PC. Uh, I've spoken about the PDOBQ adapter before. You can go ahead and check the links or the cards up here for that video where I connected that to the Nintendo Switch and it worked just great. Now, today what we're going to focus on is actually getting it working on PC. Uh, if you want to go ahead and get the, and try this method and get the adapter, go ahead and check the links in the description below. Now, this is the PDOBQ adapter or the Nintendo GameCube adapter, NGC. Uh, this adapter is pretty nifty. Actually, I believe it's straightforward. It's nothing too complex, but it has a few things that you want to point out. So it has two cables, one for power and one for transmission. And then it has a button here, a turbo button, which we really don't care much, but it has a sliding button on the side, which is actually the switch that determines if you're going to use it for a Wii U or a console or the PC. So for this method to work, you want to make sure that at least the slider is set up to the PC side. So let's go ahead and dive into the chase. As I mentioned already, this is the PDOBQ GameCube controller adapter, and uh, it's not much to do here. But I want to point out something very specific, right? Make sure that the switch or the slider in the back is actually pointed to PC, as I mentioned. You can see it here, PC. And you have your two USB cables. You want to make sure that you use both of them. One is for the transmission of the signal, and then the other one is for the power source. So you do need to have both of them connected. So after you've connected the two USB cable, make sure that you plug in or you connect your GameCube controller to the adapter and make sure that the switch is set up to PC. You know, sometimes I'll just go ahead and let Windows detect the current device that you're using. In this case, it's gonna be the GameCube controller adapter. Uh, just give it a couple of minutes and it should go ahead and plug up uh, or connect that driver. If you don't see anything showing up there, it's okay. What you want to do is actually go to Windows, go to Control Panel, and then from there hop in to the list. And I'm going to look for devices. Now, the devices I want to show up here is actually devices and printers. And this will show me the list of all the different um, devices that I have connected. In this case, I can go ahead and just look for the GameCube controller adapter. Now, as you can see, if I double click on it, it was just going to show me uh, what is connected. But if I right click on it and choose the game controller settings, it will show me the four um, ports, you know, one through four. And all these are actually active automatically. And those are the game controllers. And if you want, you can actually go to properties and check to see if they were detected correctly and if they work. In this case, move this here, press the buttons, move this here. All right. So if that is all good, you can click on OK and close this window. We don't need it anymore. Now, you know how we do. We're going to go ahead and test the Natural Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 game where we test every single video to make sure that the controller is actually working on PC. We're going to go ahead and dive in right away. We're going to go and get our x360.exe file and we're going to drop it into the game folder. Now, as you know, the game folder is where you want to save the Xbox 360 emulator. Actually, version 3 is where you save it to every single game folder. Now, if you don't know how to do this or find the game folder, just go ahead and check any of my other videos. I actually detail how to do that. Now, we're going to go ahead and drop in that Xbox 360 emulator file. And as I always recommend, go ahead and run it as an administrator. So you're going to right click on it run as an administrator and this is going to pop up right away. It's going to ask me, hey, are you sure you want to go through this? Yeah, go for it, man. And you know the whole process is going to go ahead and create the DLL file. You just go ahead and hit and create. And after that, he's going to start looking for configurations for the game controllers. In this case, he's going to search through the internet. Now, we already know that there is a current issue where they release a new version of the Xbox 360 emulator and they did some changes. So you can't really find new configurations on the uh, Xbox 360 controller emulator, but no biggie. There's no problem. Actually, I have a video on how to solve this issue. I'm going to quickly do that here. Uh, but if you want more details on how to fix that current situation with the misconfigured pads, then go ahead and watch my video on the cars up here. Right, so this is the first controller. I'm gonna go ahead and search for the second one. It's actually four of them. 
So I have to replicate this same process uh, four times. And at the end of this, it's gonna show me with the error message. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on OK for all four of them. And I'm gonna to go to the one that I wanna use. I'm gonna clear this out. Right, so now my game controller are being detected, but because there's no configuration to retrieve from the servers, we have to actually either configure our own controller from scratch, which is actually not that complex, just if you understand how your game controller works. Um, but if you don't have time for that, then you can go ahead and go into the links in the description below and download the INI file that I have added for you just to go ahead and apply it to use your GameCube controller on PC. Now I'm going to kind of speed up on th into this because I already know which buttons I want to use. So from a trigger, I'm going to go for button number five. Now, while I'm doing this, there's another trick. You can also record the button. If you don't know which are the numbers or which are the items for each single button, you can go ahead and actually press them. And how you do that is by just clicking here on the field or the button that you want to configure. You can click on record, and then you're going to go ahead and press the button in the controller. And that should go ahead and save the configuration or at least that button for that setup. Okay, so this is my current setup. I can go ahead and click on save. And as you can see, I'm gonna start moving my game controller, my game controller, and my buttons are gonna be configured accordingly to what I currently have there. All right, so now you know how this works. We're gonna go ahead and test. You know what we like to do is trial by fire. So that means that we have to test the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 game with our game controller. <laughs> It's totally different from what I'm used to playing with that kind of controller, but we're going to give it a try. All right, so as you know, uh, for you to be able to test uh, the X360 emulator, you have to go to trial and test every single one of the X input uh, DLL files to verify which one's the one that work. Since I've done this multiple times, I already know which is the uh, rename that I have to set up for this. So I'm just going to go ahead and change it right away. That'll be nine underscore one underscore zero. As you know, version 3 actually has that little beep there that tells me that at least the controller was detected. And you know that I like to test is actually pressing the buttons to verify if I can skip uh, the intro. As you can see right now, boom, there you go. And there you got it, a Nintendo GameCube controller on PC. Don't forget to like this video, and if you want more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you can be notified whenever I release a brand new video. Let's make that happen. In the meantime, you can watch any of these videos. This is Edio4. Catch you in the next one. Come on. Oh, hell no. Oh, crap. <laughs>